Welcome to the R3 Network. My name is Ryan Prazer and this is the interview corner in a brand new setting inside the R3 bar, which is brand new here in Prague. And today I'm here to introduce you to two promoters who are going to give you a little bit of insight into the event planning world. So introduce yourself, my friends. Who are you and what do you do? I'm Nick. I'm German. I currently work in a restaurant, but as a hobby, together with Dennis here, we've been organizing electronic music events. Electronic music events. Okay, so Dennis, tell me a little bit, like, is it the same partnership? Is it like 50-50 split? Do you work on a specific aspect? or? Well, yeah, I mean, we've been doing our events since pretty much two or three years. Um, mm. I met Nick before I came here. I was in Austria. Okay. So I came here and started working for an IT company. And meanwhile, I just we just noticed that we like the same music style, so we figured we would just collaborate and do different music events. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the music style. You said electronic music, that's a broad genre. Now, I'm not an expert, obviously. I love my uh, reggae music. But, um, so, like, how would you describe your, the music events you do to someone who's never heard it before? I mean, when we came up with the idea, we were living with a DJ and we had another DJ friend we found out that on Sunday, during the daytime, there were no events when a lot of people still want to party. Certain people go through the night and they want to continue partying and other people just want to have a chill day out with some good music. No one was right. offering that. So we thought we'd offer Sunday day parties and open locations. Okay. And we'd add some, a couple of other things to the mix. Well, when it came to music, we were thinking something more upbeat, funky, electronic, so funky house, tech house, something more, somewhat melodic, right. not okay. too hard. Okay. Because it's a day party and it's, it's supposed to be more happy and colorful. It's the come down music. Come down. Almost or uplifting, uplifting actually. Uplifting actually, yeah, yeah. 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 To, keep, yeah. to keep people bright, maybe. Exactly. At the end yeah. Of the session. yeah, and yeah. happy. Sure, sure. Like, party, party and lifestyle is something that everyone knows and it's something you never want to stop. And obviously there's always a market for it in our industries, promoters, events yeah. planners. So, uh, the Sundays, Yeah. what was the promotion called? Um, good food, good music, and good vibes. Because we noticed exactly those three elements are needed to make sure that you come back from a good, you know, hangout, chill session. You cure your vices from previous nights. So you just make sure that you get up and running. Just get rid of the dreadful, oh my God, Monday blues is coming. Mm -hmm. So you get into the week with a better feeling by having good food Refreshed. in your stomach, good music around you, also people that you love and with good vibes. And still being outdoors. And still being outdoors. That was a main Hopefully. contributor. I mean, if the sun was shining, we want to be kissed by it, you know? And <laughs> that was the part of good vibes that all got incorporated through the sphere that we were actually creating with that space. And our main mission was really just to have a hangout spot instead of going into a, you know, another person's apartment and keep on just chilling there. It was a nice way to just let loose also outside of your own comfort zone and still having your, you know, like-minded people around with... It's a safe way stuff. to let go at the end of the week before you get back into the real stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's just generally what parties go for, isn't it? It's yeah, a release yeah. for us all. We were trying something different as well. We all, all tried to add bistros of um, every event that we have, we try to add a different type of cuisine. So bringing so in local gonna, businesses. Yeah, local stuff businesses. Like this. Mm -hmm. Yo we had yoga teachers have one hour class there. I, I we actually had... went to one of your events and I remember uh, I got myself a fresh shave at the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, So stuff like this. Yeah. And yeah, that's actually... tattoo artists. That's actually kind of what we want to do here with the R3 project. Now, you've spent a little time with me before, we're good friends, but you've seen a little bit of the space now. Yeah. Um, now, you have your events for Sundays, mm -hmm. what would you see at work? How would you see it working here? What, what would you see in this room that we're in right now, in the bar upstairs? Oh man, here, I, I mean, from the top of my head, I would see everything that would start with like a death jam poetry session, something like real, something that brings people together on a more intellectual level, more literature level. Um, <laughs> nice. Then eventually move across over to tea ceremonies or coffee ceremonies that have these awesome hot chocolate ceremonies where you can just okay. bring stuff together it's really dope I and mean, you've got the kitchen upstairs where you can prepare everything with hot water and you can make a proper chill vibe around here carpets are coming in and you've got it going i mean that's pretty much the chill sunday that you want to have have a yoga session in one of the rooms if you can have space no i mean i already have some things here i have my playstation 2 set up there for Boom. people to use there's a stage for people to get creative like play a song do some poetry do some dance 
that is what we're going to be doing with the i3 project but now let's get a little bit deeper into it so you've been events planners promoters for a couple of years now both of you yeah what are some of the struggles you come across now I, I, I know personally I've worked with artists of all sorts and we all have our issues our demons waking up on Sundays etc yeah. but if I can get people like yourselves to give people a reason to get them up on Sundays mm. maybe we can get some stuff done yeah so what other problems have you had like when, when you're making these events what roadblocks do you run into as foreigners the lack of context or the lack of long-term context long relationships with people who already own the spaces or organize the events and not even as a foreigner but in tr trying to introduce a new wave of music that's not very exposed no. not very appreciated not yeah not very exposed here in prague was also pretty hard you got to be very persistent we had a lot of troubles finding locations that would host us or keep hosting us because our idea was to have it in different locations every time so mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit harder it's not like you find one location then you have it every month yeah, in that location. Sure. we have done that but we always prefer to change it up especially with real real world jobs it's a lot of legwork isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's, yeah, that's something of, on the other side that people might not see you as a home might not see like there is a lot of planning that goes in behind the scenes it's not just the artists on the stage there's a lot of people behind the stages that contribute yeah. to these events up to, to anything that you're going to you know yeah. up to that moment uh, what yeah. about you Dennis any any specific memory you have of like a bad day when you're doing one of these things um, I think these problems are also a cultural aspect you need to understand so if I for instance compare it to the different areas where I've done or where I used to do parties and or witnessed parties happening from Hong Kong to Dublin to Austria now here in the Czech Republic you'd always have a different kind of vibe, but you always try to get together with people that have a specific length, like wavelength that is similar to yours. And trust is one of these things that you need to have. So if you cannot ensure that the person gets stuff done, and I'm also, of course, one of these people that sometimes drops the ball, but you know, we try to make it better. And yeah, we always get do. You get very fast into also um, that cultural aspect because everybody has different expectations. Like, expectations towards things yeah and especially with uh, some of these things like the grassroots things like we do it's hard to get people to come when they're not on the dime when they're not being paid you know yeah um so my final question for you we've gone through the bad stuff now you're both very creative people you have something to give me in a little while but uh what would you say is one solution where we can start taking away these uh, roadblocks from events planning? How, how can we sort of mold people's mindsets? What would you say to someone who's a DJ, for example, or to someone who's looking to put on their own events? What's the, the best way to look at it, the best way to keep your head up, and I mean, what, what I advice would you give? What we had is, it might have been hard to get people to show up to the events. That's always the hard part. But once they're there and you're doing it right, you you get people's appreciation yeah, almost so immediately. Far, yeah, immediate gratification and every, immediate return. Every party we've had so far, we would always have people super happy, good vibe. Everybody's very respectful, and what mm -hmm. I love the most is because we always tend to during those parties run around up and down the places. So you never see us really dance on the dance floors like when we're going out, but. You'd see us sprinting over to the bar, sprinting over to the entrance, yeah. always checking if everybody's happy, how's the door doing, how's the bar yeah, doing. The staff. Because at the yeah. end of the day, we also want to make sure that the place we go to and make our events, they get revenue because that's what they count on. And so the most happiest part of this whole thing is actually seeing all those smiling faces, especially during the bar, and they keep us telling us, um, we've never had so many nice people coming here. And I'm like, these are certain things where I'm like, so we're doing something great. different and it's great it's to great hear. What'd you say? Reflects that. All about respect yes yeah. definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what we're trying to promote as well <laughs> at the, at parties. i thought so i'll be back in just a sec i'm gonna get this off camp because uh the boys have got a little present for us now hopefully we can get these into shop yeah now if you just too. hold this one guys take this one ahead and sort of uh flip it to the camera <laughs> Uh, our lovely boys here with Ubuntu on Sundays have uh, donated some beautiful artwork to the R3 bar. 
So these uh, are actual pictures from. This is from Myanmar. It's all here. That's Argentina, and this is from Mozambique. Now these will, all, of course, be uh, put up in high def photos on the screen if I learn how to edit one day. But uh, <laughs> you can come down and check these artwork pieces out at R Three Bar anytime. And uh, apart from that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for coming, boys. Thank you for doing an interview it's with me. It's a real honor, pleasure. Chatting your events and uh, cheers. Yes, cheers. Now that is respect. <laughs>